Bitcoin smashed the 200 SMA on the daily chart and is now holding support on that SMA. Also some long-term analysis Elliott waves and a bit of on-chain analysis on the podcast today. Stay tuned, the show or the podcast is about to begin. Hello guys, welcome to another FU Money. Today is the middle of the week, Wednesday. The week continues on the green and Bitcoin smashed the 200 SMA, the simple moving average on the daily chart. Also, we are going to check, as I said in the intro, we are going to check some long-term analysis with Elliott Waves and we are going to finish the podcast with on-chain analysis today. I have two charts to show you, but let's just start by the beginning as usual and we are going to see the price to time model so here we are on the price to time model let me just zoom in for you guys a bit uh, we continue on the fourth week consecutive fourth week on the green we continue above the 20 period sma on the weekly chart as you guys know this is the weekly chart is the uh, basis for the price to time model and we continue to go up catching up to the 2017 cycle which is the yellow candle pattern you guys see here the blue one is the 2013 cycle the yellow one 2017 cycle and we are now even that we were a bit uh, delayed regarding this uh, comparing to the 2017 cycle but we are now catching up again so this is good news. We are still inside the square or the rectangle here, the orange rectangle, and we are now catching up again, just a small distance to the 2017 cycle. The RSI is now leaving the yellow circle I plotted here. So we are now above or outside the circle, sorry, not above, outside the yellow circle that uh, was trying to focus on the levels of the RSI, comparing it to the 2013 cycle when we had the mid-cycle 75% correction, which is the orange dashed line here at the bottom. So we are now even going out of the circle. We are well above this orange dashed line and that is a very good sign also in the price of time model but that's enough of price of time model for today all the good news are here so nothing really bad to talk about in this one let's go directly to the mri charts and we will start here with the weekly chart for bitcoin we are now on a green four of nine and this is one of the important things to focus i I think I mentioned this already in previous videos that we have to continue with another green candle for the number five of the green count and that means that this will not be a one to four candle correction or as some people are discussing in YouTube already um, that this could be a dead cat bounce or a bull trap so in order for us to confirm that this is not a bull trap we need to start the next week so after the Sunday close, uh, we need to start a new candle here on the number five. So we need a green five count on next week. And we need to close the week as a green candle so that this is not uh, seen as a bull trap or a one to four candle correction. So regarding the weekly chart, as you guys know, this was one of the most hated charts by me in the last uh, two months maybe but recently since we started to reverse the price action above the 50 period sma i started to really like this chart much more than all the others the weekly chart gives us a very good outlook as what could this uh, leg up be and this looks very very good in my opinion so we just need the confirmation and that guys keep focus on this we need to confirm that this is not a bull trap and for that we need a close on the next candle the number five of the green count we need to close it on the green and above the close of this one which will come in just a few days coming sunday so we smashed here on the weekly we smashed the 20 period sma the green line you guys see here let me zoom so you guys can see it better this green line is the 20 period sma we already crossed it to the upside this is a very very bullish sign 
but now we need to close this candle where it is. I would not mind, in fact, to have this candle close at this height and not extend too much to the upside because it could trigger some kind of correction and send us back down again. So to me, this candle is exactly as it should be for the close on Sunday. We should have this candle close exactly like that, not going above, not going below, exactly at this level, above the 200 SMA also on the daily chart, but you guys will check it just in a few seconds. So we need another candle starting here, going up and closing on the green, not this Sunday, but the coming Sunday after this one. So that will confirm that this is not a bull trap, that will confirm that this is not a one to four candle correction on a bearish trend. So that's what we have to focus for the next few days, week and a half, however you want to count it. So regarding the RSI, we are also on the bullish structure. We are above this trend line here on the RSI. We just came down to touch the trend line and we continue to go up. So on the weekly, we are with an RSI which is bullish. Also, the MACD is about to cross the blue line over the orange line. As you guys can see here, this is a very, these are all, these are all on the weekly chart. And this is why I love the weekly chart right now. These are all very, very bullish signs. The MACD is turning bullish as soon as we close on Sunday. The blue line will, of course, cross over to the upper side of the orange line and the bars will become to show up as green. So the MACD, the RSI and the chart itself are very, very bullish on the weekly MRI strategy. So let's take a look at the daily. And this is one of the important things also I wanted to mention. Let's just wait to load the uh, MRI. And here we are. We are on a, a green seven of a nine count. So we have probably two more days of upside or just sideways action, because if we have two more candles here, the MRI count will get to the nine and have an MRI top on the daily. And then I would expect a kind of a retracement. But for now, we could still have two more days of upside and then some sideways action and continue to have the weekly candle around these levels. But the important thing here for the daily chart is, you guys can see it, let me zoom, this purple line is the 200 SMA on the daily chart. This is very important. We already crossed that line to the upside and now we are consolidating above it and finding support on that moving average. This is also a very, very bullish sign for Bitcoin, but I guess a kind of a retracement or sideways action will come in two days when the MRI gets to the nine MRI top. So guys, be, be careful. Be careful if you are trying to invest right now or if you are planning to invest right now in the next few days because there will be an MRI top and as you guys know that usually triggers a price action reversal so it's possible we can have some kind of a bit of a retracement just like we had here when we had this MRI top on the daily you guys remember perfectly that we still had another candle going to the upside crossing the 100 period SMA but then we had four consecutive days in a row of retracement so Beware, guys, because we are now getting to another MRI top here and the same could be triggered. So you guys know this already on the MRI strategy. The RSI is overbought. So we left the normal territory here to cross the border and now we are above the border to overbought territory. So this is another sign that we could have a kind of retracement soon. So beware of that too. Take a look at the RSI and focus on that. The MACD continues very, very bullish and the bars on the green show that this has been a healthy rise up on this leg to the upside. The blue line continues to be above the orange line and everything looks fine here. So I would say that the only thing you should take care about or you should focus on regarding the daily chart is the fact that we are two days away from an MRI top and the RSI is overbought. So guys, beware of that if you are planning to do something soon. I would wait. In my case, I will not invest right now. Also because we are in the dumb zone on the pro indicators framework. So regarding the daily chart, I guess that's it. But I guess we should take a look at the four hours. So the BitMEX funding rate in real time 
is a bit more to the neutral side. We are now with 0 0.004, so almost close to zero, and the BitMEX funding rate in this case is not favoring the bulls or the bears, so it's completely neutral. But I would say that in an uptrend like this, the BitMEX funding rate being neutral favors the bulls a bit more than the bears because the trend continues to go up and there is no leverage in the market regarding this. So it doesn't mean so it means that we will not have some contrary um market uh, sentiment so in this case i continue to say that we will go to the upside at least for two more days and for our chart we could even see a triangle here which is about to be broken to the upside so it's very very possible that this uptrend will continue for a few more days but beware guys because to sunday it's more than two days and we might ha have an mri top on the daily which would would bring us down to the close on sunday and the candle has to remain on the green so that uh, uh this bull trend can continue and we can confirm the next week after this one that this is not a bull trap okay so on the four hours we are still not on the overbought territory and we should continue like that we should have a sustainable and healthy move to the upside and not start with big explosions or exuberance here in the price action or things could get ugly so let's see how this goes for the next two days keep an eye on the mri you guys know already so this is wednesday so i'm expecting friday or saturday to have some kind of reversal on the price action as the mri top will be there on friday or saturday and then we have to reevaluate what's going to happen for the next day until the close of the week on sunday so this is very important to keep in mind let's just take a quick outlook here on the dollar the dollar continues to try to go up but is being rejected by the last swing high orange dashed line here so this orange dashed line corresponds to the last swing high on this side and the dollar continues to try to break it but being rejected and coming back to the downside to find support on the trend line here the red line that you guys see on the chart so there's not much to talk about the dollar i continue to say that i'm not expecting this to be broken to the upside if that happens then we will have the resistance of the moving averages which are now turning down and this is very good because on the weekly chart it takes a long time to turn the moving averages to the opposite direction and in this case the moving averages are now turning down already so it will help also when a few more weeks pass that this these moving averages probably will start to join the orange dashed line here and even make a bigger resistance to the uptrend of the dollar sending it down to retest the 90 or 89 levels for support so the dollar is now trying to fight its way back up but not being able to cross that resistance here of the previous swing high so let's see how this evolves in the next few weeks but for now there's nothing else to talk about the dollar gold is now going back up again trying to get support again on the red trend line here which was the bearish trend line but for now it says that this is a sell signal we have the red star and it says that gold is bearish i still believe that this could be the lowest close uh, lowest close of any candle this year but we were already at the same level as the weeks so the weeks point exactly to the same level which is our which are the green dots of the mri here which correspond to support and we were already there and left a big week behind but i believe that this could still be the lowest close of the year this red candle over here so that's it for gold and the smp also not continuing this this uh, very very strong uh uptrend that we had been seeing uh for the last weeks and months but now we have an a extension just after an mri top on the weekly chart and this is of course uh putting some breaks here on the smp uh long um long uptrend that was was really really strong but now we see that this uh bullish uptrend is now losing a bit of momentum we have an mri top here we are already below the wedge uh, we have an a extension of the mri and you guys see that the candle is very very short for all these days already since previous sunday and this is already wednesday so four days uh, three days have passed and the candle is almost not moving so 
I can see here a bit of uh, momentum loss for the bulls. Let's see how this evolves, but don't forget this was an MRI top. So I'm expecting some kind of uh, correction here or even the momentum to stop being so bullish and probably just go sideways for a bit. So that's it for the S&P. Well, now let's take a look here at the Elliott waves on the long term outlook chart here, the, the outlook of the long term chart. And uh, let's see how this is going. You guys remember that I had this on the weekly, I had this uh, Elliott waves uh, plotted here. And my probability was that we would reach around 200 or $280,000 on Bitcoin before the end of the year. Everything is still possible, as you guys can see. The Elliott waves start here with wave one, and this is the zero, which is the start, is exactly the lowest point of the price action for the uh, just after the 2017 cycle when we reached around three thousand dollars. So the first wave up, then we have a corrective wave two, and then we have the normal and extended wave three. Then we have the fourth, which was very very recently. So let me just, I should put this on the daily because it's easier to see. Okay, so this is the wave three after the big correction of the COVID uh, last year in March 2020. Then we had this big, big run up of the second part of the bull cycle, which is supported by the white trend line here. Then we had the fourth wave, the fourth Elliott wave here, which is a corrective wave also. And the lowest point for that was 28.8 or 28.6. It depends on the exchange that you were, of course, checking your price action. Now I'm expecting the final and fifth wave of this Elliott wave count. And that is probably going to come here. This is my bet. It will come be, uh, in between 100, I would say in between 180 to 280. So I will give it a good interval here because Elliott waves, as you guys know, are very, very subjective. It depends on the Fibonacci levels. But the Fibonacci levels that I was already checking with this Elliott wave count all point to uh, some interval in between 180 to 280. So this is what I'm expecting by the end of this year. So in this case, the price action is now above the trend line here. This is very, very important. We broke at the second attempt. We broke the trend line of the second part of the bull cycle. We found support already twice in this trend line, and we are now again going up. So if the trend continues and we can at least maintain this steepness here around the yellow line of this Elliott wave count, I'm expecting that we can still this year uh, get to those levels above the $180,000. So let's see how this evolves. Uh, but now we should take a look at the um, on-chain analysis that I promised you guys. Let me just change this here. Here is the stock to flow model. And I just wanted to uh, you guys to focus here on something which I consider very, very important. If you guys take a look here at this level, this is the deviation from the line of the model, which is supposed to be where the price action uh, was. Sorry, this line you guys see here is where the price action, price action is supposed to be. So in this case, this graphic down here represents the deviation from the mean. And in this case, we were a lot, a lot distant from the mean when we went to those 28.8k levels so in this case you guys see what what happened we were very very close to num to having a one which is very distant from the mean and you guys see here what happened the last time we had those levels was here and then we went up like crazy so this is what i want to focus on for you guys today we were at these levels and of course this reversal to the mean will take us up uh, for sure a lot more than we are expecting probably. So I'm expecting this curve, as I explained before in some analysis I did on the uh, Plan B's um, stock to flow model, that this would be the 
similar area during the bull cycle of 2017 that we could be here but just in a different scale because we are talking about much uh, very very different prices for bitcoin right now we were talking here around probably ten thousand uh, dollars actually just a bit less than that yeah but around those prices maybe five thousand four thousand and here we are talking about forty thousand so of course, the scale and the fractal will look a bit bigger than this one, but I said before that this correction that we had here and this curve up again, in my opinion, corresponds to the July correction we had before the December top of 2017. So in this case, as you guys see here, the deviation from the mean is very, very high. We were almost at one, which is 100% deviation from the mean line, which is the black line here, which is the number zero. And of course, after that kind of deviation, the prices, the price action tends to get back to the mean again, which will give us a big, big impulse here, uh, going even above what the line should be for the stock to flow model here. So in this case, going back to the full chart, I'm expecting that we cross this red line soon and we go even higher of that uh, having a deviation from the mean on the red side of things. So this means that the last time we had this, of course, we continue to go up and have uh, an extremely high peak, which actually was the mid cycle 2013, just previous, uh, just before the 75% correction that you guys uh, hear me talking about all the time on the price of time model. So this is the on chain analysis for the stock to flow model, but there is another chart that I would like to show you guys. And let me just um, refresh the page here. So we have the latest data. This is the R hodl ratio. So you guys, if you guys want to see an explanation of what this is, you guys can check this site. This is lookintobitcoin.com uh, forward slash charts forward, sl forward slash R hodl uh, ratio. And then you can check this chart. If you guys want to know how this is achieved, you can read here the indicator overview and how to use this indicator. But to me, the very important levels to take a look here are these ones. So we achieve this top. And if you guys look at this, when we got into this red line, which is the R hodl ratio, when we were at the top, we had exactly the same R hodl ratio that the mid cycle top of 2013 had. So we still corrected here and then we went really high to have the 2013 cycle top or peak. In this case, we had exactly the same level when we started to correct in Bitcoin and we went up again down and then we are going up again now here. But guys, remember, we did not even touch the red area of this chart, which indicates that we are really, really extended in price action. So we never got to the red area like the previous peaks that we had on Bitcoin here, here and here, the 2017 being the last one. So in this case, this chart tells us that despite having uh, gone so far in price action as to $64,000, this was still not the true peak for this cycle. And I believe this chart is very, very accurate because we can check the same levels that we had here mid-cycle. And this also gives us a clue that I was discussing a long time ago, which is that this cycle looks much more with uh, like the 2013 cycle than the 2017 cycle. Because as you guys can see, the 2017 cycle never had a correction to the top on this chart. And here on this chart, we had a correction already well, this one I will not consider a correction. This is sideways action. But from here to here, this is a big correction. And from here from here to here, this is also a big correction. So I can uh, compare this cycle of 2021 much more to the 2013 cycle than the 2017 one. However, and this is the important message to retain from this. The important thing here is that we never reach the red area of the chart indicating that we were overextended and probably having a top in the cycle. So we are still, in my opinion, mid-cycle to the top. And you can compare that with the same levels as 2013. So guys, 
expect a continuation. I expect a continuation. Uh, looking at this on-chain analysis here, I am expecting a continuation of this cycle and the line here getting into the red area, showing us a very approximate time when the top could appear or could show up on the chart. So I will continue to evaluate this chart. I really like it. And I will see when we achieve finally the red area on the chart. And then, only then, I will probably say we are very, very close to the top and we should start paying attention to our positions in Bitcoin. So that's it. Let me just go back here. I believe that uh, for today, this is the analysis I would like to show you guys. And this is the things I've been checking over this week. And today, finally, I had something to show you guys on on-chain analysis. So if you enjoyed the content of this video today, gently touch the like button as usual, subscribe to the channel and share it with your friends. And don't forget to join. Also, I will just put it on screen here for you guys. Don't forget to join the Telegram group. The link is just here. You can open it in a browser and then with the touch of a button, you will automatically join the Telegram group and you can discuss all matters Bitcoin with us and uh, also have some intraday analysis when sometimes I don't record a video, but I also publish on the Telegram group. So guys, don't remember, don't forget, sorry, just gently touch the like button, subscribe to the channel and join the Telegram group to be with us and discuss all things Bitcoin related. And of course, I will see you guys again in the next one. Until then, bye bye.